Hello, party Jeremy. people. <laughs> Hello. We went so different directions. You're like, hey, oh, and I'm like, hello. So glad you made it. I've been crying for hours. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we are we are bulking, I guess you could say. Yeah. With this is a the See third episode like that we filmed tonight. Bulk it up. My arms have always yeah. looked like this is muscle, but it's fat, baby. Hold on. I can't flex again. I couldn't see you were cropped. Yay, yay. Guns, baby. Guns, baby. Call me Popeye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You can do that well now. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. oh God. <laughs> oh, God. The pain. <laughs> the pain? <sighs> My God. Yeah, dude. Like, you know how you were talking last episode, I think, about the hump? Mm -hmm. on your Back there? Yeah. I, I don't have the hump, but I have the same problems. And it's from sitting like shit. Like yeah. a fucking banana all the time. So all of the shit in my chest, like all the muscles and stuff are shorter. Yes. And the back stuff in the back's longer. So of course I have neck, back, pussy and crack, but you know. All those muscle problems. So me flexing mm. too hard had them like, eh. yeah. I just yeah. I, I need... like how we're stretching at the top of this episode. Anyways, yeah. this episode we're talking about being in a mixed weight coupling, a partnership, yep. and uh, we're gonna here. we're gonna take a poll on if we think labeling our relationship mixed weight is problematic. What a fun I'm game! I'm just tired of all these woke people changing shit. <laughs> But really, when I read that in the outline, I was like, huh? Like, yeah, what? I had never, I never had thought about that. So we're just going to dive in. I did the outlines this time and I tried to find like articles to like help us. Mm -hmm. I think articles help us get a good conversation starting. And one, the article quotes, and I'm going to put it in the description, but it's from melonmag.com. And the article like title is fat and in love. Why the term mixed weight relationship is problematic. Cause we had always said mixed size, like, yeah, you know, and the article states that they think the term mixed weight relationship is problematic because it, it suggests that behind the smiles of two people in love lurks something more sinister. Some people have suggested that it's nothing more than a convenient descriptor, and of course, they are more than welcome to accept this title for their relationship if they wish. For me, though, talking about the person that was wrote the article, the blo the bottom line, the bottom line, the bottom line is that couples whose relationships are based on mutual love and trust and respect are the best looking ones. So, out of context of the article it does sound like wokeness like i'm not gonna lie it does sound like after and i know that you... i think it sounds like projection right so and my my like little prompt question is is the term problematic because why should we feel like we need to label or address the fact that we are two different sizes right mm -hmm. or does it give validation to the different experiences of the individuals in that relationship. I go with that one personally. Yeah, like, so I think it depends on where you're, I think it really depends on like your experiences mm -hmm. as being different in a relationship of two different sizes. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's, it's an interesting point. Maybe I need to like chew on it longer. Maybe I'll change my mind by the end of this episode. I don't know, but I just feel like, you know, we talk all the time about how thin people don't know what it's like to be a plus size person. They can't, they cannot conceptualize that experience for themselves just because they, they can't, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just the reality of the fact that we have two different lived experiences. I just feel like we can't, it seems like we kind of are in a little space where we can't win because it's like, if we don't mention it at all. Mm -hmm. it's eliminating people's experiences and we shouldn't mm -hmm. do that. We should think about how everybody's different, but if we focus on how everybody's different, then that's also bad because 
of shit like this or like you know in other instances for more serious reasons but saying that we can't like acknowledging the fact that we are a mixed size couple is problematic because it draws attention to the fact that one of us is like the attention's already there people are already seeing it and like if they want to see it as some lewd thing or a bad thing like that's kind of on them yeah it's not on me right. to control how people see me right i think that it's when you're talking about it in the way we are like in a podcast episode sharing our experiences of how mm -hmm. you and i are both in mixed weight couples like we are both in mixed size couples mm -hmm. partnerships i think that it's not problematic I think that it's us sharing our experiences and one day we'll have the husbands on and they can share mm -hmm. their experiences. I think that if you were to make that possibly the identif like the personality of the relationship of the partnership, mm -hmm. I think if it becomes like a fetish fetishization or however you say that big word, like yeah. maybe that's where it becomes problematic when it becomes that identity. And I think that that's kind of where they were getting at because they're like we're just two people in love and it's like you absolutely are and you're right like if you choose not to use that descriptor for yourself like on the day-to-day -day, like of course like brian and i don't walk around me being like well that's because we're in a mixed size couple you know what i mean but yeah. like if but i'm if on a platform sharing my experience in yeah. being a mixed size couple i need that identifier you know yeah and i th th what comes to mind is like if someone if two people were in a same sex couple or a queer couple and people told them not to identify as a queer couple, like that's problematic for a whole other list of reasons where like love is obviously love. But if people are like, don't talk about your queerness, you're in a mm -hmm. relationship, you love each other. Just talk about that right. or an interracial relationship or anything like that. Right. Like, I feel like it's kind of erasing it's it's not like i don't know i i hope that everyone understands what i mean and say and understands that i'm not saying that a mixed size relationship has the same problems or equal problems as an interracial or a queer couple would face yeah like, you don't ever say that at all <laughs> TikTok problems you know i'm, know. I'm too i'm afraid of being taken out of context but it's like to, de <laughs> to deny the existence it's just like brushing away the problems that we do deal with from other people mm -hmm. and even just, you know, having to pick out chairs as the simplest problem in the fucking world. Like, right. You got to get one that fits the bigger person and a, a straight sized couple doesn't have to worry about that. Right. Yeah. I agree. And I, and that's why I wanted to include it. Not, well, the article itself, that's not why like the article did have, like, she has some really great perspectives and i think she shares some really great stories mm -hmm. and i wanted to of course include those yeah madeline to wilson it. yeah it was written by madeline wilson ojo i think is how <laughs> ojo is how you would say that i'm not sure correct me if i'm wrong and i think like she gives some really great of her own experiences mm -hmm. and so that's why i wanted to share it like she said like dating my husband cost me some friendships with ladies who were always happy to be my friend provided I did not have the audacity to be unequally yoked with a partner who was not of my kind. I remember witnessing the glazed stare of a girlfriend the first time I introduced my then boyfriend to her. The episode was followed by an onslaught of snide comments about my partner somehow fulfilling a strange fetish until I decided I was not going to take it anymore and finally ended the friendship. Gross. Which, like, so valid. Like, that yeah. is such a valid experience. And that's why I was like, I love the experiences that she listed in here. Mm -hmm. But I also loved the conversation starter of, like, is this term problematic? And yeah. I think, like everything, there's nuance to it. There's context. There's a duality with it. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to include it. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, I think that it's definitely important to talk about the nuance of it. I think... I think my biggest thing is like, I don't want the the fat experience to be erased from mm -hmm. mixed size couples. And I also like, I don't want the assumption that all mixed size couples have a lewd undertone to them, or it's like about a fetish or something mm -hmm. like, 
when obviously our husbands love our bodies, but it's not like it's not a fetish way. They just love our bodies. Right. Which is okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I'm not saying your partner to like your body. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And, you know, if if the fetish thing is what gets your gizzard, you know, if you like that, if it butters your biscuit, like fine. Yeah. But that's not everyone's experience. Right. And it's and weird to think it, it, it would be weird to insinuate that it was. Right. Oh, no, absolutely. And I think that's and when we get into our personal experiences, like, obviously, that's on mine. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, we're not we already got. Oh, my goodness. The whole conversation of like, remember, we did like the fetishes and like, we are not here to yuck your yum, everybody. Like, as the mm-hmm. kids be saying, like, we're not doing that. But what yeah. we're saying is like, not everyone that is in like with the context of mixed size couples like not every single mixed size couple you see is a fetish style like relationship yeah and it's up to the people the two consenting adults to provide you with that information if they choose to whether it is or isn't is yeah. none of your business exactly <laughs> like- literally i mean literally and i know I know we follow people on the podcast TikTok that get a lot of get a lot of hate for that because everyone is so convinced that this girl is in a fetish relationship because the guy is very thin and she's built like we are, you know, very large, very large belly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she has said time and time again, that's not the case. But people don't believe her. But that's not her problem. That's, that's not her theirs. problem. <laughs> you yeah, can't, you cannot control what everyone thinks. No. People's opinions of you are none of your business. Yeah. Period. Some commenters on TikTok would would probably really need to be reminded of that, but well, it's social media. Social media at its core is community. And when you put yourself out there to find a community, you're going to get people in your comments that hate on you because you're you're thriving in life and all you can do is keep thriving and ignore those comments. Keep doing you. Ignore the haters. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry everybody. We had to cut out like 2 minutes of what I said, so this is what you get. Yeah. Anyways, uncut next. <laughs> I I've just got to say I really enjoy you saying uncut now because <laughs> every time you do, I think of weenies. <laughs> oh no! Hell yeah! Another part of the article that I really liked, and it goes back on the fetishism, like b- piggyback on that of like mm-hmm. when speaking about fat people in relationships, the topic of fetishism, fetishism, fetish, fetishism, fetishism, fetishism. There we go. Sure. Follows closely behind, whilst there is no official data to quantify the proportion of men who fetishize fat women's bodies. There is a lot of anecdotal evidence to suggest that it's a thing. An anonymous blogger goes by the moniker Your Fat Friend, cites her dating woes with partners who felt entitled to her body because of the size of it. They would say things like, I love my women fat. Big girls usually means big mouth too. She recounts the lewd messages she received from a fellow dater on an online dating app. But this does not mean every man in a relationship with a curvy girl is fulfilling a weird obsession. Which, like, I thought it was weird to say weird obsession. So, you know, take that as you will. Believe it or not, some of us are quite comfortable in our birthday suits. And again, like, this is quoted, you know, from someone, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's if you, I'm going to, like, for my personal opinion, if you have a fetish with bigger bodies and it's two consenting adults... That's not a weird obsession. No. It's just what you like. Yep. Now, if you're out here making it everybody's problem and Mm -hmm. harassing bigger women or bigger bodied individuals. Yeah. I would even I would even go so far as to say that I don't think having a fetish for big bodies is a problem. I think it's more 
Yeah. It's more about how they treat the people. Like yes. no no one, regardless of fetish or not, is entitled to someone else's body just because they think that person's hot. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, beautifully said. Thank you. <laughs> it's it's not a it's not just like a chubby chaser or whatever you want to call them. That's not just an issue with that. Like that you could say is an issue with cishet men i would go so far as to say like it's kind of more rampant on that side of the aisle maybe maybe that's a little too much but that that problem extends so far beyond fetishes and whatnot Mm -hmm. like that that is just like a problem with dating period absolutely is it running into people like that yeah no boundaries yeah like doesn't know how to treat a person as a person yeah yeah absolutely Period. Okay. Period. So that was the article. I think it's good. I mean, I think there's some like eyebrow razors in it, but again, this is one person speaking from their experience and just sharing their experience. Like this is a human. We're all human. So some things you're going to agree with, some things you're not going to agree with, you know, don't throw out the whole human and their experience, but you know, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Exactly. Um, so Haley, you want to share some of your experiences with experiences with us about being in a mixed weight couple? Sure. Yeah, we can do that. So many on the outline. I don't know what you're going to choose. I know. I know. <laughs> so I'm trying to think like I I feel like most of our, this is tough because I feel like, damn, sorry, everybody slobbing on too much knob, apparently. Yeah. Why knob? I need to probably stop. Why knob? (laughs) As long as you don't start slurring, we're good. (laughs) I definitely, whenever Jackson and I first started dating, I wasn't as conscious of like, the fetish aspect of it as i know you were like it Mm -hmm. says in your first bullet point Mm -hmm. i i'm trying to figure out a nice way to say this like my first long-term relationship we were both big people and i was not i was not unattracted to him or like i was not turned off by his size or anything like that but it did present issues as far as like comfortability in bed mm-hmm. you know two i had a full-size bed at the time two oh my god very yeah. big people it was it's hard enough even with it was hard enough even with jackson but it was something that like in a way when i met jackson it wasn't like i honed in on him just because he was thin but it was kind of like this is nice to not have to deal with this is nice to only have to worry about my comfort right and considering those things but most of the things that I think we've run into issues with is just his his lack of a lived fat experience. Mm-hmm. Like, what are these fuckers doing? Can you calm down? Both of you. No airplane God. ears. I mean, I don't care if you leave it in, but... <laughs> but it was... Where was I with that? His lack of a fat experience. Lived fat experience. Yeah. Yeah, like him growing up, although he's tall for a guy, like he's like 6'2". So he has had issues with like things like finding pants that are long enough. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, he was always able to go into a store and just find what he needed and go. And I think once we got serious, especially once we lived together, he began to see and understand why it wasn't that simple for me. Because I think he might have thought initially that I was just being particular because I am particular. But it was mostly a lack of access thing for me. Right. And I think he thought I was just spending more money on clothes because I wanted to and not because of necessity. Exactly. Yeah. And things like, you know, things like that, having to having to consider weight limits on things and Mm -hmm. taking that into account 
you know, I, especially if we were buying something, like when we were bed shopping, like I was all about making sure that all the weight limits were fine. I took on a lot of that labor because I was the one who was ordering it anyways. And again, very particular. So. Right. <laughs> right. Which a mattress you should be. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. If I'm dropping like a thousand dollars on something, it's got to be right. Absolutely. But I do, I am looking at some of your bullet points right now. But Check. the last one, like the grief that I can't wear his clothes or that he can't pick me up like normal couples, like he, he can pick me up now I, after losing the weight that I did. It is very scary. I, yeah. I don't like it. I think if, like, I like it as far as like, oh, this is cool. And it's a little bit of a thrill. But the whole time I'm, my feet are off the ground, I'm like, please, God, don't drop me. Like, that's going over and over my head. Like, please, for the love of God, do not drop me. <laughs> Have you guys had sex with him picking you up? We've had, like, foreplay with it. Okay. Where I was, like, against the wall. And he picked me up oh. a little bit. So, like, that was nice. Because it was like, I know this wall's got me. Even if he doesn't. <laughs> but it's like, we've talked about, I mean, in the sex department. Like, right. we both, we've expressed interest in, like, sex swings and things like that. Yeah. And some of the ones that he's looked at that, like, hang on a door, I'm like, there is no way in hell. Like, what? First thing I'm like, what's the weight limit on that? Yeah, it's because you're watching how to build a sex room. That's why it's 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 getting you, it's mm -hmm. getting you. Your little light bulbs are going off, and now you're like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, we certainly need that. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't. I wouldn't say that our sex life is boring, but like going into the relationship, I was one of those people. that was like, oh, I don't need toys or anything like that. Like, right. just regular regular old sex is good for me. And, you know, Ooh. I just didn't know. We got together very young, but. Well, yeah, no, so I'm saying like, I'm saying like boo to like regular sex without toys. Like everybody should get a toy. A toy for you, yeah. a toy for you, a toy for you. Yeah, it's, it's not a, I've definitely grown up in my mindset with it where it's like, it's not like somebody's doing something wrong and you have to add the toy. It just right. adds a little spice, a little flavor, if you well, will. Well, little help at hand. Yeah. A little teammate, a little teammate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I would say otherwise things like things related to my physical abilities and like those are less prominent than they used to be. But whenever I was in like definitely at my highest weight and dealing with the back issues that I had at the time, there are a lot of there were a lot of things that I just flat out could not do. Mm -hmm. And that like I felt bad about that because it's not like I wanted to have such limitations. And it also I also felt bad for him because when it came to like chores and things. If I couldn't do it, inevitably, he had to pick up the slack. Right. And, you know, there were a lot of things like going to amusement parks or things like that, which I still haven't been to one. I'm kind of like, eh, about it. But it, it's things yeah. like that, like experiences and the day-to-day -day type of things, I guess I would say, is the biggest, the biggest issue. Yeah. I, I can't really wear his clothes. Like, I can wear a t-shirt, but it's definitely tight. It's not, like, the cute, oversized, like... No. Yes. Yeah. That's all I want. That's what I want. To wear an oversized I never had shirt. Yeah. Even I whenever I was with... Ex. Oh, really? Yeah. I got to... He let me wear something of his one time. It was a Wu-Tang hoodie. So, thankfully, I got my way with that. But, like, he didn't let me wear any of his stuff. And it was, like... It was a little bit bigger than what I would have been able to wear at the time. But he was just like, no, I just don't want to share my stuff. Not the Wu-Tang hoodie. Like, come on. Let, let I, her wear that. Like, I, let her... I got to wear it once. And I promised Gosh. that I wouldn't, uh, that I wouldn't keep it and that I would bring it back. And we had been together years at that point. I know. You look, I'm like, who else are you sleeping with? Like, why is this such a thing? Like, why are you not? I don't think it was like, I don't think it was anything nefarious as far as that goes. But I think he was also like me in particular. Yeah. And like, didn't want to share. Stuff. Which like, yeah. I'm sure it probably does like suck to have like a favorite shirt or a favorite hoodie. And then like your girl come over and she's like, 
but I yeah. love it. You know, and you're like, I do yeah. too. Like, don't take my shit, you know? Yeah. Because, like, it's not like they're taking our stuff, right. you know? But we're like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I get like it. if I, I had all of his hoodies, I would have totally understood. But it was also yeah. like, my guy, you have over a hundred pairs of sneakers. I'm asking to tr- to wear this one hoodie one right. time. Yeah. And I had to like lobby for it. <laughs> yeah? yeah. 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 No, I I had like a couple of my ex's shirts cuz he was a bigger guy too. So, though but that's the thing, like when you're <clears throat> in kind of like the same size couple, you can wear each other's clothes and like Yeah. That was also, like the grief that kind of comes with like you don't feel like a normal couple like a Mm -hmm. like a shown on tv couple of like the girl walking to the kitchen with like the guy's shirt you know like i would look like winnie the pooh if i did that (laughs) i I couldn't even i can't brian is so tiny my husband is so tiny you guys like there's no way there's just no way like it might be like my arm maybe but you also have your your rack is very I do robust. have a very a very robust rack. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. for a plus size person, I don't. So I think that that does help. But I do see what you mean. Like that is it is frustrating to not even have the option when you yeah. when you want to. It sucks. Like he can't pick me up. I mean, he can pick me up like a cute little one. Yeah. Like a, mm, you know. But like not we're not like, like we're not banging against walls, you know, which is like yeah. I'm okay with Mm -hmm. but i feel like little every like i'll say for me for like my inner child she's always wanted to be able to do the spin around like get spun around because that's what you see in disney movies you know like yeah so like she's like "Ah," but it's like no girl like "Mm, yeah not today baby not today (laughs) like sorry and you have to like grieve that like yeah because you're not in the same size and that's i think that's an experience that people of mixed weight partnerships that's a shared experience that we have is like there are those limitations because of that Mm -hmm. not just clothes but also like like you said like physical activities even though like i had my hernia surgery and i'm like completely healed from hernia surgery everyone in my life thinks i'm not healed from hernia surgery i can't tell you how many times i've heard like don't pick that up you can't carry this you can't do i'm like guys like i'm fully functioning again like i'm fine even at work they're like no yeah. And I'm like, guys, no. like, I'm fine. It's fine. Like, they're like, no, it's fine. We'll pick it up. But I'm like, I'm big strong now. I'm big strong again. You know, because I'm yeah. used I was used to being the heavy lifter. Yeah. And now it's kind of shifted to where it's like, no, like, don't lift that. Which is like, I am fine. It's fine now. Um, Jack still does that about my back too. Like, yeah. It took him I I understand because of how bad it was. I think it was honestly kind of traumatizing for him to experience like to watch me go through that but it Mm -hmm. took him a long time for for him to not be like in fight or flight basically if i bent over to pick something up right like he just he would expect the worst like i think it was really hard for him to get past that and there's even still times where he's like oh be careful and i'm like i'm okay right i am a lot more mindful now of things that i know are risky Mm -hmm. for one and it's also just like not every single thing I do anymore is risky. Right, exactly. So that helps, but yeah. I get I get the fear for sure for your hernia. <laughs> yeah. It's like people at the shop too. Like they're so sweet, but they're like, no, like don't let that. I'm like, I'm yeah. strong again. Don't worry. Because I'm used to being the strongest. I'm used to being the biggest. Yeah. So I'm used to being like the Sam will pick that couch up and move that and blah blah blah. And now it's like kind of shifted Damn. of like Yeah. Like and now it's kind of shifted of like eh. No, thank you. I'll do that. Or like, we'll figure out a way, you know. We will help you. (laughs) We will help you do it, which is nice. But yeah, that was the big reason. That was I almost didn't get with my husband because of our size difference. Because I thought I was a fetish. And I didn't want to be in a fetish relationship. That was Mm -hmm. just something that I wasn't willing to consent to. Yeah, At the time, I just didn't want to do that. Um. I've never been an eater, so I've never wanted to be with a feeder. Just that's just not what turns me on. I don't want to be in that type of relationship, and I think that's fine. So I needed to make sure Brian 
wasn't it wasn't a fetish thing because every time we would like go out we would like go out to lunch and stuff we were co-workers mm -hmm. and like we were doing normal things like co-workers that are getting to know each other on date and like even people that are dating like they go out to eat like they go right. out and do things but I was like, mm, you know, and he never was like, let me feed you this, you know, but I just yeah. wasn't sure. So I was like on the lookout for it. Yeah. And at that time, I was he curious. was. Yeah. I was curious if he'd given you any like he red didn't. flags or anything like that, like to make you think that. No, not at all. If anything, he was so not sexual at first, like when trying to pursue me. So because I had been in very like, you know, he knows as I went through like my single era, you know, my mm -hmm. single year after I left my fiance. And so like yeah. I did have men that were very fetishizing, very sexual towards me. Mm -hmm. And it's what made him stand out is that he wasn't. And he was just like someone that I could rely on. And that was there and just right. willing to help me when I needed it. And that's, that's the person that I ended up marrying was the yeah. person that listened to me and came when I called and always had my back and I could trust and I could count on and not the person in my fucking messages being like, Hey girl, like them tits big. Yeah. Love them. And it's like, no, dude, like, no. So it just wasn't what I was looking for at the time. But mm -hmm. in doing so though, when we did get together, I did have to like, I was the one hyper focusing on the size difference. Mm -hmm. And then I, when now that we're married, like I have to go through like gr the grieving process pretty frequently of like having to realize that my health and his health will always look different and mm -hmm. will be treated differently. Um, he gets treated differently at doctors than I do. His, his eating habits look so different from mine. Like he can fucking kill a pizza and no Damn. one treats him oh my god like it's a tuesday like he doesn't get any weight it doesn't affect him in any negative light whatsoever like no one looks at him weird if he's eating pizza like mm -hmm. but if i was to sit down and eat a pizza in public yeah. you know you would it's get looks like, yeah. i would get looks you know and i don't care now i don't give a shit like you know yeah but i can't even eat pizza because of how it affects my tummy you know like right and so how, how did you find out other than just like becoming aware of like medical fat phobia? How did you how did you find out that he was treated differently at, at the doctor's office? Did you do you go to appointments with him? No. So like he had to go to an appointment with me in order for oh. like me to be treated fairly. They because he was in the room, they mm. treated me differently. Oh, but when he okay. wasn't in the room, they treated me badly the fuck that's crazy yeah. so it was and like you know as a big person i think it's really common I'll, I'll speak for only my experience but i got so used to saying right off the bat that i'm on a weight loss journey mm -hmm. just for them to treat me fairly just for them wow. to take my concerns seriously i would get in the room and they're like hey how are you doing today and i'd be like you know what like honestly i i would make up an entire scenario like Especially when it comes to my back, like I was like, you know, like I, I, I hurt my back, like when I fell down the stairs and I like actually hurt my back and like yeah. did like the real damage to it. I literally said like, I, you know, I've been being more active in my weight loss journey. You know, I have been exercising and I could have heard it then, but I also like fell down the stairs. So I'm wondering if like that contributed to it. And they actually took me seriously only because I had said like I had been lifting weights and I had been exercising and I had been on a weight loss journey. And hmm. then they were like, oh, well, like, let's do a scan to make sure you didn't hurt your back. That's wild, man. Where if that I is... hadn't said that, they'd been like, bitch, you fat. Like, that's why your back hurts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even, I don't know. Like, let's, I know that that's what you're experiencing is not an isolated incident. It's still, and I, like, I know better, but it's still bonkers to me to hear medical professionals, like, if you fell down the stairs, they're just like, oh, yeah, it's because you're fat. That's why you hurt your mm -hmm. back. And it's like, no, I fell down these stairs. <laughs> right like did you hear the first part as they're like looking through on yeah. the laptop now at your freaking weight yeah but yeah that's been a big i think journey in our marriage has been me having to grieve like it really has been so traumatic of like that like if i 
that my health journey will always look different from his health journey because of our sizes that because I get like burnt out on health where it's mm-hmm. like I have to be so conscious of what I'm consuming 24 seven. Yeah. And it becomes like, you just get so burned out with it. Like I just want to be able to sit down and eat a Subway sandwich like my husband or yeah. eat a pizza or have like pasta, but like it affects me so differently than him yeah it really does and I don't have that option I mean I do but then if I was to sit down and eat like he eats I would just be putting more and more weight on which puts more and more weight on my back like it would yeah. it would adversely hurt me or mm-hmm. whatever you meant like adversely like it would affect my health negatively right and that fucking sucks to be it does suck shown that every day you know yeah absolutely i'm i'm so sorry that you you face that in in your relationship like i i understand what you're talking about though like the exhaustion of focusing on health and like especially especially pre-weight loss like i didn't give a fuck and that is like i spent like the first like 10 plus years of adulthood being like you know what this is bullshit i'm gonna eat like everybody else and i'm gonna be fine i'll show them it didn't work out that way but i totally get the the urge to just be like you know fuck this like this is so exhausting i don't want to deal with this i want a sandwich Mm -hmm. i don't i don't want gluten-free pasta or whatever like i just want chicken alfredo and I want to stuff it in my mouth just like I'm watching my husband do right now. <laughs> oh, praise. Yes, Lord. And I can't. And it's not yeah. because of the Alfredo. And it's, it actually has nothing to do with my weight. It has everything to do with the fact that, like, my body fucking hates gluten. My body hates dairy. Like, it hates it. If I, a hot girl problems, right? I'm in the yeah. bathroom. The other day, like, literally yesterday, we went to Chili's with my sister and her mm-hmm. partner and like i had a little like little little brisket i was like like murdered me my body can literally not process brisket i don't know what it is is that is that beef pork whichever one I, it is it's, whichever it's, one it is do yeah. you have issues with other cuts of beef or pork <laughs> no like i my huh. body can like if i was to eat steak every single day my body mm-hmm. would be fine steak and potatoes Mm. steak and potatoes steak and potatoes like it thrives but the minute i like have a piece of bread that isn't sourdough bread dead how how dare honestly very rude of your boss so rude i live in the south like are you kidding me but like brian he's just out here just like vibing Mm -hmm. and he doesn't gain weight he has no like negative side effects on his health like that's he, crazy. you know what I mean? And he does nothing where I'm out here like I'm doing yoga and Pilates and, mm-hmm. you know, in a calorie deficit and moving my body, eating intuitively. And it's like I wake up and it's like, oh, JK, you're having mm-hmm. a flare up. No period for you, baby. You know, and yeah. it's like I look over at him and I'm like, the world really is built for you. Mm-hmm. Built it is. For you. <laughs> and it, it, and I didn't have these I didn't have these thoughts when I was in the same size couple with my plus size ex. You know what I mean? Yeah. He also couldn't eat like that. He also had like I mean he ate like shit to be honest, but it did affect him. You know what I mean? Yeah. It affected both of us. Uh um, Yeah. It's just like I, I'm almost like hyper aware because Brian is standard size. Right. And We'll go on hikes and I'm more tired because I'm two of him. You know, I'm yeah. 300 pounds. He's like a buck 50. So I'm yeah. literally two of him and I'm going to get winded. I'm going to get, I'm not going to be able to go as fast as you and stuff like that. And those are things that you notice when you're in a mixed weight relationship and have to work through together and have that solid foundation of communication. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You need the communication. Mm-hmm. As I'm as I'm sitting here like listening to what you're saying, I feel like it's I guess even though I'm in a mixed size couple, 
he is not he Jax is no longer the same as Brian as far as being able to eat whatever he wants because there was there was absolutely a time where he would try and eat as much as me why I don't know but I think he saw me eating so much and was like you know what I need to eat that much too and Mm -hmm. (laughs) because of it he gained a pretty significant amount of weight for his size but he he still eats like he he does not eat the same way I do like we prepare separate meals he loves himself some energy drinks he loves himself candy pepperoni rolls he has high cholesterol but I think seeing the that he's trying he's trying to work on it but I think seeing his weight fluctuate throughout Mm -hmm. the year because he will kind of like chunk up a little bit more during the winter and then once it's summertime he'll lose like the 10 or 15 pounds he inevitably gains but i i think that that is honestly helpful because if he was i think it would wear on me too if he was just like exactly the same had never gained anything didn't have any issues i'd be like you've got to be fucking kidding me like every day yeah (laughs) it's it's a lot one like you know the candy whatever but jack's like mm-hmm. absolutely needs to work on the energy drinks that's the one thing that's why i did that face like it's the energy I know. drinks like it's your heart I know. bro like i know that's your heart. He, like, I've, <sighs> I've tried i mean he still he still uses nicotine vapes too but at least he doesn't smoke cigarettes anymore that's true so yeah. i mean I, I i can't make him eat like me i have to i know i have to kind of like put the info out there mm-hmm. and you know nag a little bit but he'll get to it when he's good and ready i have to let him do his thing so brian's kind of like he will eat so we eat the same thing sometimes during the week Mm -hmm. because if it's a meal that's like healthier that i cook for me and he loves vegetables he loves that stuff it's the quantity though Mm. like i eat this much yeah he eats like this much like my face full like he eats the because he's so thin that Mm -hmm. his metabolism has just is just yeah he just has a champion and i have no metabolism i have no thyroid yeah so if i'm not like moving my body like it's just not processing it's not working and but he like if he doesn't eat all day and it's like three o'clock like he's gonna pass out like he just literally oh it's crazy like he has to consume so much but he has gotten a lot better about like the junk like he doesn't eat any fast food anymore like Mm -hmm. he only has like two or three fast food places that are deemed like okay yeah because they don't make him sick so if they don't make him sick like he eats them like Mm -hmm. zaxby's doesn't make him sick but like we have a banging burger place down here called freddy's Mm -hmm. that makes him sick so he doesn't eat that um yeah so it just different like he is he has gotten better with age of like how the food makes his body feel like he has picked that up for me of like the intuitive side yeah but he can also like if he wants to have a fucking whole pizza he can and i'm over Mm -hmm. here like one piece in it and i already have fucking heartburn and diarrhea like pisses me off and i'm just looking at him like and that's just you know it's just something you notice is like when you're in like the mixed size couple and like you know Mm -hmm. a standard couple standard size couple they may notice this stuff too but like this is just yeah from my experience of being in that you know because like he has allergies i don't so like right now this season's killing him i'm thriving like i everyone's like sniffling and can't breathe and i'm like oh spring has sprung you know (laughs) like it just doesn't affect you know yeah so i hear you but that's funny i think i would like to hear from other mixed size couples for Mm -hmm. them to share their experiences with us in the comments of course we want to know what are some differences that you've noticed? What's some experiences that you've gone through? How you guys are working it out and communicating and sharing how you feel with one another. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think this pretty much sums up the episode. What do you think? I think so. Okay. I think so. All right, cool. Well, where can they find us, Haley? As I hear my husband go into the snack cabinet, son of a bitch. <laughs> you put that snack down, Brian. <laughs> God. You can find us in the snack cabinet, but if you want to see our content, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and threads at plus size section on TikTok at the plus size section. 
drop us a little email at the plus size section at gmail.com if you're feeling froggy. And if you would be so kind as to leave us a five star rating and, you know, a review on any podcast platform that you frequent and also share this with your friends. Hmm. Please, please, please. Please, yes. Please, please, please. Uh, please. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.